If a person had persistent symptoms after a concussion, does it increase the chances for persistent symptoms after future concussions? So the answer kind of quickly is that we don't, we don't know. Uh, we don't have a lot of research on this. However, the speculation is that, yes, it would. I haven't seen a ton of uh, scientific literature that looks at this specifically. Um, but if we think about the causes of persistent symptoms, a lot of them are due to pre-morbid factors. So things like people with poor coping skills, people with anxiety, people with pre-existing depression, those types of things are likely to still be present after another concussion. And if you've already gone down that road again, for example, you've had a concussion, you've had a prolonged recovery, your anxiety about getting another concussion is fairly high. And then if you do get another concussion, that anxiety can lead to more prolonged symptoms once again. So like I said, there's not a lot of evidence on this. Um, the other thing that can cause prolonged symptoms is kind of on the metabolic front. So if you get a concussion injury, your brain undergoes this energy deficit that takes, you know, three to six weeks to recover. And if you were to get hit again during that three to six week recovery prior to fully recovering from that injury, you get a compounding effect of that injury. And now the recovery period takes longer than it does for one single concussion. So if people are getting concussed in that initial vulnerability period, the potential for them to have a prolonged period of vulnerability where they're getting concussed easier and easier leads to prolonged recovery as well. So you're going to get prolonged symptom recovery, but you're also going to get prolonged recovery of the metabolic injury that happens within the brain. So once you've had this, it's kind of a snowball effect because it's difficult to dig yourself out. So if you have an injury that takes three to six weeks to recover, but you get concussed again on week two, well, now the recovery period goes from instead of three to six weeks, it now goes up to you know three to four months. So now if you get concussed at any time during that three to four month period, not only will it happen easier, but now the recovery period goes potentially on to, let's say, a year or more. Well, you can never dig yourself out of that hole because you're always kind of in this vulnerable state. And so if that leads to persistent symptoms and that's the cause for your persistent symptoms, chances are you will continue to have persistent symptoms unless you get out of that deficit that you've created for yourself. The other causes of persistent symptoms are blood flow impairments. Now, if you've had a previous blood flow impairment, potentially you're more likely to have one in future concussions, but we don't really know. Um, metabolic uh, stuff, uh, nutrition, gut health, uh, inflammation. If you have systemic inflammation, you have poor gut health, potentially you're going to continue to have that unless you fix it. And so if you get another one, maybe that's going to help to prolong your symptoms as well. Neck dysfunction, that can cause prolonged symptoms. If you get concussed again, if you had pre-existing neck dysfunction, neck injury, you're probably more likely to have that cause persistent symptoms in the future. And like I already mentioned, a lot of this is kind of on the psychological realm for people with persistent symptoms. A lot of this is driven by pre-existing anxiety, poor coping skills, uh, history of depression. Um, all of this stuff can lead to an increased likelihood of having persistent symptoms from your concussion. Now, if you do get another concussion, you still have pre-existing anxiety, depression, and poor coping skills unless you've done something to kind of manage that. So, to sum it up, we don't have a lot of research on whether or not if you've had persistent symptoms with one concussion, you're guaranteed to have persistent symptoms with another. But just based on what causes persistent symptoms, the assumption is that yes, it likely would lead to prolonged symptoms, but we need research to solve that question. And right now we don't have any.